So Jesus said in John 10, verse 10, he says, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. Now, the best way that I know that you can have life abundantly is to be well and to be healthy. So God wants you healthy. He wants you well. He wants you to be able to experience everything that you possibly can in this life. Because this is life, it's just temporary. And he wants you to enjoy every moment of it. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 8, Jesus says, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. So Jesus is telling us here, I have healed you. Now go out and heal others. And you know, Jesus didn't tell us to pray for the sick. Jesus said, heal the sick. We don't need to ask God to heal the sick. That's something that he has told us to do. He's given us the power to do that. He's given us the authority to do that. It's something that God expects us to do because he's commissioned us, go out and heal the sick. Now God has prepared us through the death of his son and the abiding Holy Spirit that lives within us so that we can become that delivery vehicle. We can be Jesus' delivery vehicle taking forth his power and his authority to heal his sick in his absence. So God created you to do the works of his hands. He created you to continue his work here on this earth. And he did so by giving you the power of his spirit. And that spirit lives within you. So I pray that may your tongue be the sword of the spirit. And that you are able to heal others. Not that you are able, but that you will go out to heal others. But I feel that as a church, we failed God in so many ways. We aren't going out to share the gospel. We aren't going out casting out demons. We're not even going out to heal the sick. Now, why is that? Why aren't we doing that? I think one of the main reasons that we as the church, as the bride of Christ, are not healing the sick is we don't really understand who we are in Christ. It's important for us to understand who we are in Christ. We need to know that the words that we speak have power. You know, the words that we speak to our pain, the words that we speak to our affliction, the words that we speak to our sickness, to our medical condition, they release the Holy Spirit that's inside of us to do the healing. It's that spirit that lives inside of us that heals. It's the spirit that lives inside of us, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. If he can raise Jesus from the dead, that spirit can heal anybody that we speak over. Now, for some reason, most of us don't accept the fact that we're new creatures in Christ. Now, we talked about that this past week, that we are new creatures in Christ under a new covenant with new powers and new authority. You know, we think that we're like everybody else. We accept the lies of the devil that we're just like everybody else that we don't have any special powers, we don't have any authority. We don't know how to heal anybody. Why is God expecting us to go out and heal other people? But the truth is, we're not like everybody else. We're new creatures in Christ. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 3, why do you still act like you are mere mortal men? You're not mere mortal men or women any longer. Why are you acting like everybody else in the world? You're different. And you know, once we come to Christ, 
we're not like the rest of the world anymore because we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. He's our daddy. Who's your daddy? Father in heaven. We are the children of God. We're not just mere human beings. Now, being born again, that means that we're a new creature in Christ. We come under a new covenant. Now, that new covenant that we come under, that's an eternal covenant. Unlike the old covenant, the new covenant never needs to be replaced or repaired or, or changed or revised in any way. It's the eternal final covenant that God has with each and every one of us. Now the old covenant, the old covenant was full of thou shalt not do's. Thousands and thousands of thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do that, thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do that. But the new covenant is thou shalt do. You shall love your God with all of your heart. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. It's the things that you should do, not what you shouldn't do. So if you're still trying to live by the rules, if you're trying to live by the laws of the Old Covenant, if you're trying to avoid all the things that the Old Covenant tells you, thou shalt not do this, it's a losing situation. You cannot win. You're going to be sent to hell because you don't have a Savior. Now too many people, they still live in the past. They still live like they're under the Old Covenant. They still remember their sins. You know, like I said, that's a no-win situation. Now, what does any of this have to do with healing? <laughs> Being a child of God. Remember, Jesus commissioned us in Matthew 10, 8. It says, heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy, and I think we can update that. Cure those with cancer, cure those with COVID, cure those with neuropathy, cure those with thyroid, condi thyroid conditions. Cast out demons, give as freely as you have received. So it's God's will. He's telling us, he's commanding us, he's expecting us as his children to go out and heal the sick. But many people, they sometimes believe it's not always God's will to heal the sick. Because many times, you know, you may be praying over someone that's sick or ill or under some horrible physical condition and you don't see them get healed. You don't see them getting any better. So you begin to believe a lie that, hey, it must not be God's will that they get better must not be God's will that they be healed. That's a lie of the devil. Don't believe it. Because as children of God, we live by faith. We don't live by sight. You know, for some believers, the problem is that we don't know what is or what isn't God's will. I think the real problem for a lot of believers is we don't know God. You know, we're his children. We're his children. We're children of God, but we don't, live, we don't know our Father very well. We need to know our Father better. If you're a child of God and you think that God is going to use some kind of evil to change you or he's going to use some kind of sickness to draw you closer to him, well, then you don't know God. That's not God. God is not the author of sickness and disease. God does not use the devil to correct you. God does not use the devil to bring you closer to him. The Holy Spirit is his corrector. The word of God chastises you not cancer. 
Now I know there's people that are hearing this message today and they're able to cite examples in the Bible where God actually did make people sick. One of those examples was Jezebel. He made Jezebel sick. He made her sick that, so that she might feel his power, so that she might repent of all of her evil ways and that she would turn to him. So I ask you, was Jezebel a child of God? No. Well, he also made Pharaoh sick. He hardened his heart, and he had to suffer many, many plagues. But was Pharaoh a child of God? No. No, I think you agree. No, he was not. God will use sickness to punish the people of this world, the people who do not know him, the people that are not his children. He will punish them with sickness so that they will know that he is God. They're worshiping some, something else. He wants them to know who he is so that they can repent and turn to him. Yeah. But God will not use sickness to punish his children. Everybody's read the New Testament numerous times. Did you ever notice that Jesus never taught healing? He never called all the disciples together. Here, come on, guys, gather around me. I'm going to show you how to heal. So watch and learn. He never did that. Jesus used healing, and this is the important part of the message. Jesus used healing to verify who he was. He used healing to show the world who he was. He was the Messiah. He was the, he, uh, the Son of God. His healing proved that he was these things. He healed to verify that he was the Word that the prophets had long talked about. And the Word had come to life, and he was the Word. He was fulfillment of the Word. Today's church, we have things backwards. We want to use his words to verify healing. But healing verifies who he is. It also verifies who you are. You are a child of God. It's because you are a child of God that you can heal. You heal because you are a child of God. Now many people in the church today, they want to live by the rules. They want to live under the Old Testament. They like rules. They like structure. They want to know, what should I pray in order to heal somebody? What should I say? They want to know the words. They don't want to know him. They want to know the words. They want to know what should I do? What should I say? How should I recite this? So they've got it backwards. They think there's some kind of a secret involved here when you're healing other people. Like it's some kind of magical hocus pocus with your words. If you say these words, they will be healed. We think that if we can just, if I can just get the process right, if I can just say the right prayers, if I can just say the right words, if I can get this ritual down, if I can do things in a certain way, then the glory of God is going to fall down upon me and that person is going to be healed. Putting it all on them, they got it backwards. We use words to verify healing. And when they don't see healing take place, they feel they just didn't do something correctly. I didn't do it right. I didn't pray correctly. I didn't put my hands on them correctly. I didn't say the right things. I didn't do the right things. And we think that somehow, you know, being sinners, our flesh gets in the way. 
you know, our sinfulness gets in the way of our ability to heal somebody else. Our lack of knowledge, we don't know the secret, gets in the way. And because we let these things get in the way, this, you know, these lies in our heads, we feel like failures. But healing is not brought about by your knowledge of the words that you say. It's not the words that we say. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us that's doing the healing. It's not our words. Why in the world do we as children of God think that we can heal in the flesh? We can only heal in the spirit. Last week we were talking about uh, Paul addressing the Galatians because in chapter 8 they were like turning back to the old covenant ways of doing things. And he's saying, did you not receive the Holy Spirit through your faith, through your belief in Jesus Christ? You didn't receive it by doing things under the law. So why do you think you're going to get salvation under the law? You only get salvation under the Spirit. Well, the same thing holds true here. We cannot heal under the flesh. We heal with the Spirit of God working through us. So the only thing that gets in your way is your faith. You know, you see many examples in the Bible where Jesus is healing people. And he says, it was your faith that healed you. Why do we believe that if we could only live more righteous lives, if I could live more perfect lives, if I could sin less, if I could get my addictions under control, if I can control my sinfulness, you know, then God could use me to heal other people. We think it's us, you know, we're just not where we need to be in Christ to heal others. But if you have accepted Jesus, you're where you need to be in Christ. Because there's no way that we could ever be good enough by those standards. Those are old covenant rules. When we pray for the healing of others, you also see that the people that we pray for, well, they tend to expect us to behave in certain ways also. Not only do we believe a lie that we've got to do things a certain way, the people we're praying for expect us to behave a certain way in order for them to receive healing. You know, they want us, want us to be dramatical or theatrical in what we say and what we do. You know, they want us to hear something that we've learned, something that we've memorized from some long lost hidden secrets of the universe that you know, only a few people know and we're one of those People that know it, but it's, it's not that way at all. It's the words. The words do not verify healing. The words that we say do not verify healing. Healing is verified by who we are in Christ. It's who you are in Christ. So here's a funny story I want to share about healing others. You know, once you have more experience going out and praying, healing others, once you've seen other people get healed, once you become more confident that it's, it's not you that's doing the healing, once you become confident that it's God that's doing the healing, you can start to have fun with healing other people. For example, how many people know Benny Hinn? You know Benny Hinn? He's a, well, he's, he's a healer. Well, Benny Hinn realized that God, it's God that heals people. And Benny Hinn realizes no matter what he did, it's nothing that he is doing that is healing other people. And once he realized that it's God that heals them, he started having fun with healing other people. And he wondered, well, what would happen if I waved my coat over other people, so Benny Hinn took off his coat. 
You are healed. <laughs> Amen. And they were healed. So then Benny Hinn says, well, what would happen if I waved my hand? So, you are healed. And they were healed. And you wonder, what would happen if I blew on? That's how I got the Holy Ghost, by the way. You are healed. And they were healed. See, it wasn't anything that Benny Hinn did. It was what God did. It was the Holy Spirit being released that did the healing. Why? Why? Because it's not a formula. It's not a ritual. It's not a method of how you do things. It's not what you do. I can do it. You can do it. It's who you are in Christ. The Apostle Peter, he would walk past people in the street and just the shadow touching them would heal them. We've got a young man that comes to the river room on Saturday night. His name is Billy. Mm -hmm. Billy came up to me last night. He says, Pastor, did you put your hand on me last week while we were praying, I think, for his sister? And I said, yes, I did. He says, well, while we were praying for your sister, you came up, you put your hand on my back. You didn't say anything. Just, but I had had this horrible stomach problem all day long. It was irritated. I was feeling really horrible. I really didn't know if I was going to come to church that night. And, and you put your hand on your back, and right away it was like fire on my back, and my stomach cleared up, and within seconds, it was all gone. Now, I didn't say anything. I didn't even know he was sick. Everybody was praying for his sister. But it was because I was a child of God. It was the Holy Spirit in me that was being released. It was nothing I did. I didn't say anything. I didn't even know he was sick. Have you ever walked in the path of a woman who just walked by you and they're wearing a lot of perfume? It's like a chemtrail behind an airplane, you know? <laughs> you know, the woman could be long gone, but if you step into the pathway where she was just walking, you can step in, you can step out of that scent of the perfume. Well, the Bible says that's the way we are supposed to be as his children of God. We carry the aroma of life with us everywhere that we go. People can receive your healing as soon as you walk into a room. You don't even need to know someone is ill or someone is sick. It has nothing to do with anything that you did. You don't get the glory because you didn't do anything. It's God. God gets all the glory. Amen. And why? Amen. Because you're not normal. You're not like everybody else. You're super normal. You're a child of God. Amen. It's who you are in Christ. Now, you have the living spirit of, the, of Jesus Christ living inside you right now. Not everybody on this earth has that spirit living inside of them. You're different. You're not like everybody else. <clears throat> Being a child of God, when you heal other people, that verifies you're a child of God. It doesn't verify you know what words to say. It lets the other person know that you know God, and God healed them. Now maybe you're here today and you feel that you're just not qualified. You're not qualified, you're not able to heal the sick. Well, you're still believing a lie. But you want to, you want to be able to heal, heal the sick. Maybe it's you that needs the healing. Maybe it's you that needs to be healed today. So here's all that I want you to know from this message today. You aren't the one doing the healing. Jesus. 
It's the spirit that lives inside of you because you are a child of God. Now, something very supernatural lives inside of you. And that power, that's what's being released to do the healing. And you don't have to get ready. You don't have to learn anything. You don't have to prepare anything. There's nothing for you to learn. You just have to have faith in Jesus and have faith that the Holy Spirit is living inside of you. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit that abides inside of you, the Holy Spirit is ready. The Holy Spirit has been healing people for thousands and thousands of years. It doesn't need to learn anything new. It doesn't need to teach you anything. You just have to have faith and release the Holy Spirit. And then you can heal anything. The Holy Spirit can heal anything, can heal anyone. Now, through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, you are complete, and you are able to heal, heal the sick. You don't need to get ready. You don't need a special anointing. You don't need the gift of healing. You don't need a formula or a script or a ritual to follow. You don't need an impartation for healing. You just step out in faith, following the commandment, that you will heal other people because you've been given that power and that authority. Now, 1 John 2, verse 27 says, You have received the Holy Spirit and He lives within you. You don't need, to te you don't need anyone to come and teach you how to heal other people because you don't heal them. It's the Holy Spirit that lives inside you that heals them. And if you abide in him, he will abide in you. You're able to bring about healing because of who you are.